Spencer is here for InsideTrackNews.com. I'm here at Motorama. There you go, folks. Drink it in. That's what it looks like. That's the JBJ Modified. <laughs> John Baker Jr., we're handing out here. I like your hat. That's really nice. We're talking about your 2015 Oscar Modified Tour campaign. Now, first things first, I don't think many people saw you headed the, the Modified route. You hadn't really talked about it much. I mean, it sort of came out of nowhere. Tell me the story about uh, when uh, when you made the decision that uh, you wanted to go and, and chase the Oscar Tour in, uh, in 2015. Well, we, uh, we built the trailer to do something different uh, when we got the trailer last year. and We toured around had a ball doing that. And then uh, I went to do a bench racing episode and uh, Crystal made uh, you <laughs> two hours late. So I spent two hours staring at Dan's car and then I went home and just kept thinking, man, I need to get something with wide fives and coilovers and try that. And then we went to the rules meetings and uh, left a little unhappy. So what do you do? You change your situation. So here we are. I mean, this is, uh, this, this sort of gives you, you've always wanted to travel a little bit more. Now you got, I mean, you don't got to worry about a rules package. You're, you're the legal at every track that Oscar goes to. Yep. You get to spend a little bit more time at home. Did the relaxed schedule have a lot to do with uh, why you chose the Oscar tour? Uh, no, um, we have a rebuilt crate engine that we wanted to continue to use for cost reasons. And there's only a few places that allow you to still use rebuilt crates. And uh, we jumped over because of that. And uh, I think it'll be fun. We got a good deal on a car. Uh, from Rudy Uppersma, and then we converted it, cut it all up a whole bunch, converted it to a mod, and here we are. So now this is this was Rudy's former super late. Yes, the one that ran last year. Okay. So now, when I talk to a lot of drivers, we do a lot of these interviews, and they talk about coming over to the Oscar Modified Tour, and yep. they talk about the parity and how close every one of these cars is. I mean, the fact that you could be out there, you know, with you know just a tenth of a second of away from uh, from the guy, you know, five or six cars in front of you, did that have a lot to do with uh, another reason why you wanted to run with the modifieds? Well, we've been. We've been chasing competition a little teeny bit with the Thundercar thing because we seem to have... Uh, you chase figured, guys away! Yeah, we seem to figure some stuff out, maybe upset way too many people. And these guys got a good thing going and there's some guys that are nearly unbeatable. And I'm hoping this year we'll try and cruise through and see if we can get some top fives. I'd love to hang, hang on to a checkered flag in this division, but the reality of it is let's go learn these tires, learn these cars, and we'll move forward and see what happens at the end of the year. How radically different are these tires going to be from... from I'm sure you've, there's been a number of different kinds that you've raced on in Thundercar as the class has changed throughout the year, but how different are these going to be? Well, I kind of suck on the late model tires, like the extra traction isn't what I'm used to. I'm used to a car that you got a manhandle and slides around, and these cars stick really good, so you got to kind of be a little more gentle with them, I assume, because I know that with the other tires I've ran on. So I think it'll take a little bit of getting used to. Now, you get to go clear across the province. Yep. What's one track that you're most looking forward to going to? Oh, uh... Probably Varney, because it's banked like this. I think that'll be kind of cool. And uh, and uh, some of the guys were already over offered me some advice for springs and stuff like that to try and jump in the car for going down and racing at Varney, try and get me the ballpark. And so far, everybody that's come around talking to me about this car in the division is just fabulous. So I'm real happy at this point. If, if everybody's as nice to me the first night of racing as they have been that I've seen this week, this is going to be one fun year. Now, from anyone that you've talked to about, about racing at Varney, uh, because from an outsider's perspective, it looks as though if you're, if you're looking for a track where you got to drive your modified almost like a thunder car and sort of muscle it around, I would expect that Varney would, would be that track. Is that the way the guys are talking yes, about it? That's what they're saying. They're saying you get, get that thing pivoted through the corner and just hang on or down the back suit. It's a little teeny bit sideways and just sort of scream the throttle and pray. So I think it'll be neat. Now, I know that the, the, the mods have sort of gone through this uh, the, the debate between the, the builds and the crates, much like almost any other division yeah. in racing, right? I mean, so uh, obviously you know where you stand on, on the crate side, but uh, do you feel as though with the with the way the rules have changed this offseason, you're giving up a little bit to, to the built motors? I think if you're winning, you're cheating, and it doesn't seem to matter what you put in the car. We could put a six cylinder in the car and go win a race with it, and someone's going to say you're cheating in that too. But I think the parity, 175 pound punishment to run a built motor over a crate motor, I think that fares up that 70 horsepower, 80 horsepower difference pretty close, in my opinion. Now, the, the way the tire rule worked, that you're, that you're sort of getting used tires from, from the super late model, they're all going to be use a little bit differently they're all going to have a different tread wear i mean is that is that going to play a role in, in strategy and trying to figure these cars out i mean that's, that's a bit of a curveball is it not i gotta find some super late guys i don't uh i i know a lot of people in the super late thing and i'm not sure if they're already helping out other teams that are, that are lesser teams and hopefully if not then i can jump online and get some help from them and go at it that way so I, I think I'm gonna have to find a couple of buddies and some supers and we'll work from there and kind of see what happens now we've been bothering you to come to sunset for what feels like forever and now you get to come up here and run. how many times five times 
six times. Six times. Six times in one. So you're making up for all the years where you weren't able to make it there. I mean, you, are you excited to finally get out to, to the I, new Sunset Speedway and, and run it with the modified? I can't wait. Last time we left Sunset Speedway, you know, many, many hours in tech and finally got to go home with our trophy and our money and just had a great time. And then being asked not to hang out there or go play there at all, it's kind of been doing what we've been doing. To go out there and go try it out, it's going to be sweet. Now, none of this happens, and I'm going to pan just like, look at this, look at this car. Look how good that looks. Good looking car like that doesn't happen without the people behind the scenes. Thank the folks that uh, that make it all make it all possible. Oh, cool! My farm bro hat came in. I got two awesome hats. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna switch it up, Spencer. You got and jumped he, for a he minute. He drank more than them at Autumn Colors and yeah, got sicker yeah. than them at Autumn Colors. These guys are mean to me, but uh, yeah, no, I, I couldn't do this without everybody that helped me out. I got John Baker's Auto Service, or yeah, John John Baker's Auto, the Marksman Club. Uh, oh man, I still gotta read the car. It'll get easier as we go. Keeping, yeah, We're going to do a few of these. Farm bro, uh, Rudy from Ajax Muffin and Rad came on board this year. And uh, hopefully some more people. Spencer's going to do his promotions to try and help us out a bit that way. And uh, we're just going to go at it that way, see what we can do. Oshawa Hearing Aid Clinic came back. So if you go deaf watching me, I know where you got to go to try and get some hearing protection. Well, I mean, congrats on the move over. I'm, I'm so excited to see what you guys uh, have cooking for 2015, and uh, we're, we're going to keep a close eye on you. All the best uh, during the upcoming season. Yeah, no, I couldn't do this without my, my support from my whole family and Sarah and the kids. And I bought this chassis off of Rudy on December 18th, which happens to be one of the greatest birthdays around, so I've been told. It happens to be your it's birthday. A, it's a pretty good one. And Brock's birthday as well, and brought this thing home and revved her down to nothing and started to build it back up to this. And uh, I can't wait to actually get out and drive the thing. We're going to take it home, rip the body all back off it, and go after the chassis. Because if anybody thought I remotely brought what I was bringing to the racetrack to put at this show for people to look at, you need your head. <laughs> it's that simple. There's no way I'd put all my stuff on display like this for a weekend. I think the Oscar Mod guys are going to have a lot of fun with you. I'm, I'm I think so you're going to have a lot excited. of fun with them. I'm so excited. A whole new group of guys to get to play with, and none of them hate me yet. And it's going to be neat to walk into a racetrack and not be hated the minute I unload. It's like first day of school all over again. Uh, yeah, I'm nervous as heck. Thanks for the time, my man. All right, brother. JVJ, John Baker, Jr.